He is absolutely a lilicon. Hey guys, what's up? The fall season is here with one of my beloved anime, so without further ado let's loop into episode 1 review of ReZero Season 3 Part 1. At first we see that one year after the previous season, Subaru has been training at a secret facility provided by Roswell L. Mathers. Over the past year, he's grown stronger and more athletic, all to help Emilia win the royal selection. His training is interrupted by a surprise visitor and Emilia's summons back to the mansion, prompting him and Beatrice to return quickly. At the mansion, they are greeted by Joshua Euclius, the lilac-haired younger brother of Julius Euclius and a devoted fan of his brother, as well as a member of the Anastasia camp. Joshua presents Emilia with an offer too good to ignore, if she attends an exclusive party in the Watergate city of Priestella hosted by Anastasia, Anastasia will share information about a magic crystal that could help bring back Puck. Intrigued, Subaru, Emilia, Beatrice, Otto, and Garfield set off to investigate, but not before Subaru visits the bedside of the unconscious Remington. So it looks like we will be spending quite some time in this new city, and get to see charcuterie that we haven't seen in 8 freaking years, bruh, I can't believe it has been that long since season 1 aired, but it will be a blast to see some of those old faces again. Also it was too refreshing to see Subaru's super cringe otaku behavior again. We see that with the royal selection still ongoing, Otto updates Emilia and the audience on its current state, as a year has passed since the previous season. Initially, Duchess Crush Kirsten and Lady Anastasia Hashin were the frontrunners, but Crush's loss of memory has caused her favor to slip, allowing Emilia, Priscilla, and Felt to gain traction. Emilia's popularity has grown due to her role in defeating the White Whale and a Sin Archbishop. Priscilla, known as the Sun Princess, has gained influence by inheriting her late husband's land, gathering powerful allies, and captivating the public with her charms. Felt has rallied the marginalized and rougher elements of society, driving a strong movement with her flexible, inclusive ideology. Meanwhile, Anastasia Hashin, supported by the wealthy merchants of the Hashin Company, has been using her wealth as a weapon strategy to advance her position. Otto nervously warns Emilia that becoming indebted to a camp so tied to commerce could be risky, but with the hope of restoring Puck on the line, Emilia and her group push forward. Obviously people are seeing Emilia and Subaru as threats now, but I wonder how they will react if they find out about the White Rabbit incident. Also I highly doubt that Puck will be back anytime soon. Moving on we see that upon arriving in Priestella, the group learns about the city's peculiar design. Built over 400 years ago as a trap, Priestella's confusing canal-based infrastructure is disorienting, and no one remembers what the trap was meant to ensnare. Despite this, the Venetian-like city thrives, partly due to its proximity to Kararaji, a country with a Japanese-like aesthetic. When the group reaches their meeting spot with Anastasia, Subaru is excited to find it resembles a Japanese inn, complete with futons, yukata, and okonomiyaki, though it's called daisukiyaki in Kararaji. Before revealing her reasons for the meeting, Anastasia sends the group to meet the songstress maniac, who holds the crystal they seek, and who is obsessed with the traveling bard Liliana. Subaru and Beatrice split from the group when Subaru gets seasick on the water dragon boat, allowing him to meet Liliana. Though her unconventional songs surprise him, she agrees to help arrange a meeting with the songstress maniac once she learns who Subaru is. Unfortunately, the meeting doesn't go well, and Emilia fails to get the magic crystal, but remains determined to try again. Let's be honest, Liliana is probably going to be a new addition to Subaru's lowly harem, but she seems to be a pretty fun character, although I can't really predict what role she will be playing in this arc. Also the song was really nice and catchy. Next we see Crush and Felt arrive for the royal meeting, with Crush expecting a discussion with Anastasia about the Sin Archbishop of Gluttony. This revelation unsettles Subaru, but he and Crush find common ground in their shared goal of hunting their enemies, both claiming to be the first to locate their targets. Before Anastasia can explain why she summoned everyone, she encourages the camps to enjoy the inn's amenities. During this downtime, Subaru advises Wilhelm to reconnect with his grandson, Reinhard, 
while Garfield enters off and encounters a woman who eerily resembles his mother. The relaxed atmosphere is shattered when the drunk vice captain of the Royal Guard, Heinkel, arrives, revealing himself as Wilhelm's son and Reinhardt's father. Tension escalates as Heinkel hurls insults at his family, tearing apart their fragile bond and taunting Reinhardt by refusing to let him inherit the Astria estate. Just as tempers are about to explode, Priscilla crashes the meeting, upset about not receiving an invitation, clearly looking to stir trouble for her own amusement. I do think Priscilla is here to create chaos for fun, but there's probably more to that, and it might not have anything to do with the royal selection, although it's obvious she is going to be using the Astria family's messy situation. Also if that woman is actually Garfield's mom then I don't know how all this will play out. At the end we see that as Amelia, Beatrice, and Subaru explore Priestella, they come across Priscilla dancing to Liliana singing. Priscilla tries to recruit the bar to her camp, but Liliana refuses, preferring her freedom. Impressed by her sincerity, Priscilla drops the idea, and Liliana, eager to perform more, asks for snacks first. On his way back from fetching them, Subaru joins a crowd captivated by a woman yelling from atop the bell tower. She introduces herself as Sirius Romani Conti, the Sin Archbishop of Wrath, her name eerily similar to Petalgeuse. Sirius asks the crowd for help with a question about love. As the crowd falls under her influence, their emotions merge, and no one reacts when she drags out a chained boy. After praising his supposed heroic sacrifice, Sirius throws the boy from the tower. The crowd, still laughing, is trapped in the shared emotion, oblivious to the horror of death. Panicked, Subaru rewinds time to before he left Emilia and Beatrice, feeling sickened by what he just witnessed. I think most of us have a pretty good guess of who Sirius is, but I wonder how Emilia will react to that when she figures it out, and how Subaru will handle things. By the way, don't worry I'm not a light novel reader, so this is just me connecting the dots. Nonetheless, we are just one episode into the season, and yet so many interesting plot lines opened up that I'm already super hyped. Anyways thanks for watching everyone. If you like my video then check out some of my other videos. Also don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to keep me motivated to make more videos, and you can also leave a comment if you want to say something, because it helps me fight the almighty YouTube algorithm, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram or check out my Facebook page, links are given in the description until then see ya.